And what we're going to talk about today is wisdom. So before we get started, it's going to be in James. It's going to be James 3, uh, verse 13 through verse 18. We're going to be talking about wisdom. Now what I want to do before we get started, I want to kind of play a little game. Do y'all like games? Who likes games? Now we don't play games in the Anderson household because we're too competitive and it always ends up in fights. No matter what, that's playing basketball in the yard, that's playing Monopoly, that doesn't mention that Melinda cheats a lot. So if you leave, you better carry everything with you. Y'all ever play cards with somebody? I know y'all Christians, y'all don't play cards, right? I've never played cards, that's, that's of the world. I don't cheat, I'm honest. I just win, that's the thing, I win. So you don't have to cheat when you're a winner. So I get up from the table, if you leave your cards, what is Melinda doing? <laughs> and Cole's helping her wash the door. So we can't, I can't, we don't play games in the house, but I wanted to play a game this morning before we got started. If I say the word wisdom, picture somebody in your head that you would say has wisdom. Now, not me. I know y'all want to put me in your head first, but not me. If you had to paint a picture of someone wise, what would they look like? Oh, <laughs> what else? Gray hair, because gray hair equals wisdom, right? Right, what else? Slow moving, been around the block a few times. Right, to the, to the younger people in here, that age is going to look different than to the older people, right? So we're visualizing what wisdom is, and you know, a lot of times as, as Christians, we try to live our lives on worldly wisdom. And there's a difference between worldly wisdom and biblical wisdom. Right? The definition is vastly different. When I talk, when we begin to talk about worldly wisdom as compared to spiritual wisdom, it's two different concepts. Did y'all realize that spiritual wisdom is a complete different concept than worldly wisdom? What we would define the world as that withered old wise man that looks like Gandalf off of Lord of the Rings. Y'all don't know about that either, right? Y'all don't watch secular movies. Y'all too holy. But at the end of the day, we define wisdom one way, but God defines wisdom another. And the problem we face as Christians is when we begin to take the world's wisdom and try to apply it in our churches. It does not work. You ever heard this? Oh, well, we need a, we need a new deacon, so let's pick up brother so-and-so because he's a good businessman. You ever been in churches where you do that? He's been the manager before, so let's put him in the deacon's position because that's managers, right? Not scripturally. Scripturally, we need to look for servants, right? People with a servant heart. So when we begin to take worldly wisdom and apply it to spiritual matters, it always breeds chaos, disunity, and dissension. True? We're going to even talk about Christians that think they're taking biblical wisdom, but applying it in a worldly way. Does that make sense? Have you ever took biblical wisdom and applied it in a worldly way? Hmm. That ain't so chipper. What, what happened? Y'all fell off the cliff on that one. Y'all felt the trap? Y'all get where y'all see the traps before I get to them, I'm going to have to be more cunning. But that's what we're going to talk about today is how to guide your life the right way using spiritual wisdom and not wisdom of the world. Because when you use the world's wisdom, you get the world's results. How many of you have ever got anything good out of the world? None? You got something good from the world? Well, <laughs> well you got, but, but I'm talking about the benefits of living worldly. Who ever got anything good from the worldly benefits of life? Right? You got to get something, but at the end it always costs you. You ever notice that? Anything I've ever had has always cost me at the end that the world gives me. Is that true? Is sin fun? Oh, y'all liars. No, who said no? Sin's fun. Some of the best fun I had in my life was sinning. But it always cost me something on the back end. And the cost on the back end didn't warrant the fun I thought I was having. I don't need to get any great details, do I? So here's what James says. Stand with me to your feet. James 13. James 13 says this. Who among you is wise? 
and understanding. Now James is sending this, this message to the church and he starts this section off by saying what? Who among you is wise and understanding? Is James laying a trap? Yeah. How many do you think when he said that reading from the letter of the church wanted to jump to their feet and said, oh, I'm the wisest one here? <coughs> Let him show is by his good works or his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. Y'all see that, right? Wisdom Spiritual wisdom ties into what? Showing and not saying. Got that? Think about that. He says, who is wise among you? Did he say stand up and tell me who's wise among you? He said what? Show. So it ain't about the talk you have. It's about what? The life you live. We're going to keep going. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. How many of you in here today have taken biblical truth and used it and twisted it to worldly means and lie against the biblical truth? There'll be more hands than that. I'll start quick. Uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. Find that in the Bible. Moving on. This wisdom is not that which comes down from where? Above. But it's earthly, natural, meaning sinful and human, demonic. Is that saying wisdom is demonic? Worldly wisdom is demonic. And then using the word of God, worldly, to get your results is what? Demonic. Anybody ever seen in churches where people use scripture in order to get what they want when they use it out of context? Hmm. We're going to have fun today. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is what? And there is every evil thing. If there is disorder in the body of Christ, it always points back to a lack of godly wisdom. True? But the wisdom from above is first pure. Then peaceable. Gentle. Reasonable, full of. I mean, I'm glad you got mercy. We're all living by mercy, right? We forget that sometimes. And good fruits, unwavering. Y'all like messing with wishy washy people? What well, one day down the next, can you mess with them kind of people? I can't, I can't, I'd rather you be mean to me 24 7 than mean to me one minute and nice to me the next. I can't figure that out. Either be nice to me all the time or be mean to me all the time. That wish you watch your business I can't handle. Them kind of people do y'all avoid? Like what kind of crazy we got today? You ever had them people you walk into work, you go, I wonder what kind of nut job we get. You're that way? <laughs> stop it, Christy, just stop it. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace. By those who make peace. Dear Heavenly Father, God, give us your word. Lord, I pray, Father, that you'll help us to hear it, understand it. Satan, you must go to the pits of hell where you belong. You have no power in this worship service. As he sings in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. So we see here that James is having to address the supposed wisdom of the early church. Because the early church was still living under the umbrella of what the Jewish people believed. We talked about last week when it started off the verse by saying what? Not many among you should be teachers. Meaning what? Not many of you, among you should be leaders just because you want to gain a foothold in the spiritual world. So we see that now James is saying many of you believe that you are wise. But let me tell you the difference between Worldly wisdom and spiritual wisdom and how people are using worldly wisdom to run the church. Does it ever work that way? Church never functions properly when I try to handle church business the way the world would handle it. The funny thing is when God asks me to handle the church business, he always asks me to do something that doesn't make any sense. Y'all ever realize that? Does the things of God make sense? Let me say that one more time. It's okay. That's not blasphemy to to agree with me. Do the things of God make sense? The scripture even says it's not going to make sense to you because we're worldly. The world handles things this certain way because it's natural. 
Does you know what he says a little bit further over? He said, because it's natural. Does anybody have to teach you how to be a sinner? Did y'all have sinner 101 when you were like four years old? It starts before then, right? It starts like at one year old. Jude's magically now decided that at school every day we're going to wrestle. <laughs> so he is running a wrestling clinic at preschool every day. I knew something was up. We went Monday morning to school. We're walking in. One of his little friends is coming in behind him. Her, his mom says, he has been waiting all week, all weekend to give Jude a hug. So this is what they do. They have laughing circles and all this love, peace, and harmony. And a little kid comes up to Jude with his arms out. He's been waiting all week. John Hood stiffs arm in the forehead and said, no hug. <laughs> that segue to the teacher going, oh, yes, by the way, Cole is, Jude is teaching our kids how to wrestle. I'm like, it does not surprise me one bit. Comes home yesterday from school, and I said, Jude, did you wrestle at school today? Yes. I said, are we supposed to wrestle at school today? Yes. yes. So he's acknowledging his worldly ways and his worldly sin. We don't have to teach anybody how to sin, do we? We just naturally take up the inclination. And what's bad is, as Christians, when we get saved, we have the propensity to still handle things the way the world handles things. Because of the, the biblical wisdom we have, often it's hard to implement. Has God ever asked you to implement something in your spiritual life that's hard? Like going to that person that offended you and apologizing? But God, I didn't do anything wrong. Is that what he said? Did he ask? He said what? Go. Or when we speak to someone from a condescending manner, do we do that from a condescending manner because God told us or because it feels good? How many people in your life has used the Bible as a hammer? Anybody ever been hit with a hammer? Y'all probably think every Sunday morning, right? But we see the difference in that spiritual wisdom and that worldly wisdom because First James says what? Who among you is wise? Who has understanding? Now he's not saying who in here has wisdom. Because when we define wisdom, we define wisdom as what? Supreme knowledge over a subject that is developed over time. That's why when I said wisdom, everybody naturally thought in their mind of what? Old. Because wisdom is hardly ever gained what? At a young age. Why? You got to live a little to get wisdom. But worldly wisdom not, is always equated to knowledge. Y'all ever notice that? You ever heard this in the church? Oh, he's wise. He knows a lot of scripture. I don't care how much scripture you know. That does not make you wise in the kingdom of heaven. Because if you are knowing the scripture but not applying it to your life, you're not doing anything. And that's the way the world views wisdom is what? The attaining of knowledge for the benefit of myself. True? Would you define worldly wisdom as the gaining of knowledge for the benefit of oneself? Who in here has a degree? You went to school for your degree, right? Why did you go to school for your degree? To gain knowledge of that so that you could use it for what? For your benefit, right? I went to school. I took tests. I got certifications. The reason I got those certifications wasn't out of the goodness of my loving heart, but was so I could make more money. At the end of the day, did your parents ever tell you that? Son, you can't be a painter, therefore. Amen. <laughs> you ever heard that kind of stuff? Let's be a doctor. Let's be something that makes some money in life, right? But the point is that we want to use worldly wisdom to gain things here. And a lot of times we begin to take that worldly wisdom that we have and think that we can use the wisdom of God to gain something in church. Ever been there? Ever seen that happen? Because he says what? But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart. That means you see something else that somebody else has. So you take that worldly wisdom that you possess. And you throw a little bit of Bible teaching on top of it. You cover up your true, your true ambitions. And then you try to get what you want using Scripture. Been there? You ever had that preached to you before? The people quoting verses that don't even know what it pertains to? 
and using their biblical knowledge to try to what? Impress you so that then you'll make them what? Leaders because they can quote 42 verses from the New Testament. Does that show true wisdom? Have you ever got caught in that trap? You ever heard somebody say, oh, he knows the Bible. My question is, does he live the Bible? Because knowing the Bible and living the Bible are two different things. And James is cautioning the church here because the church was knowing the Bible, but they wasn't living the Word. And that's the difference. He said, man, where you're using the Word of God and you're using your knowledge to gain something in the church is demonic. You know why it's demonic? Because you're beginning to di cause disunity in the body. Do you know the number one thing that God requires in a church? Oh, you say the number one thing is? Unity. If there is no unity in your church, guess what? It doesn't matter what you do. It all is for naught. Because God is not a God of chaos. God is not a God of what? Dissension. God is not a God that is there to separate, but is in, in, in turn to what? Bring together. Does God ever say segregate yourself? Next week we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about when, when or we're going to talk about that tonight. In 1 Corinthians, it ties together when he says, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Cephas, and I'm of Jesus, right? We all got a click in the church. God never intended church to be that. He wants us to be united, united because wisdom comes from what? If the world says wisdom comes by knowledge gained in order to get something, what does biblical wisdom come from? The Holy Spirit. That's it. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Don't matter about your grade point average. Don't matter if you graduated cum laude. Doesn't matter if you got 25 degrees. Doesn't matter if you can't even read. God says that when you get the Holy Spirit, I give you wisdom. So who in here is wise? Do that again. Who's wise? If we know Jesus Christ is our personal Savior and Lord, He says, I've given you the wisdom that you need. Because wisdom in the kingdom of God is not your knowledge, it's your actions. See the difference? The world tells you that wisdom is something that you gain to get what you want. God says the wisdom that you possess is what? How you live your life. Because you show how you live in Wisdom. Y'all know them dear saints of God that you would call dear saints of God not by what they know, but by how they live? Y'all know any of them? They might not can quote every scripture in the New Testament, but guess what? When times is hard, they'll take you by the hand and say, you know what? I've learned that in my life we need to go to God for our situations and our problems. Let's go there first. That's called living by what? Spiritual wisdom. He says, look, if you think you've got knowledge and you think you've got understanding, don't talk to me and tell me how smart you are in the kingdom of God. Don't talk to me and tell me how long you've sat in the pew. Don't tell me how many Sunday school classes you've taught. Don't tell me how great and mighty you are in oratory and all your prayer life. Show me how to live. Because that's the true example of spiritual wisdom. He said, look, don't tell me about it. We got too many Christians talking and people are dying and going to hell. Because we want to run our mouths about how wise we are, but never living in our lives. We come in and hear sermon after sermon and scripture after scripture. We never apply it. Instead, we want to talk about it. Pastor, that was a great message you gave this morning. Well, I'm glad I increased your knowledge. But now use it. Because if you're not using it, this is useless. I can memorize page from the cover to the rear, and if I'm not using it to uplift the kingdom of God and change people's lives, it is for naught, because that is worldly wisdom. That's acquiring wisdom for my own benefit so I can tell someone else how smart I am in the kingdom of God. All the while, people sitting on the pews with you are dying and going to hell, and you're hitting them over the head with a hammer of this because you want to make yourself feel better. Y'all having fun yet? Y'all probably think I should stay home today. Houston, you got all these people stuff in here to get take take, take home of this. It's your fault. <laughs> in verse 15, he says this, or 14, he says, but if you have selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against.
against the truth. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means when you tell me you're spiritually wise and you got it all together and you're living like hell. Ooh. Been there? He said what? You can say you have knowledge all day long and you can talk about how wise you are in the kingdom. How many days you've been in church and that you've won the perfect attendance award for 42 years that maybe came back to church. He said, but when you live your life like hell on the weekdays and come in here and portray that you have the spiritual truth and wisdom on Sundays, what are you doing? You are lying against the truth. When we have the spiritual wisdom of God within us, and yet we live like the world and we handle business like the world, we are telling everybody around that what? The truth is a lie. Why? Do actions speak louder than words? How many Christians are living their lives and saying one thing, but living a lie against the truth? Oh, I'm just blessed. I'm the best person that Jesus ever created. When he broke me, he broke the mold. You bunch of peon heathens beneath you need to gain my wisdom, and then you would be better on it. Sunday morning comes around, and you cuss a blue streak at your employer. Because they didn't pay you right on Saturday. So the truth you have has now become a lie by how you live. Do y'all see the harm in this? James just said, man, all y'all in here acting like y'all got it all together when y'all ain't got nothing together. Because if you have it together, you don't have to tell me how good of a Christian you are. You show me how good of a Christian you are. And the wisdom is gained by my seeing you act, not hearing your gums flap. We got a lot of this in church. That that spiritual wisdom, flapping their gums and living like hell. How many people in here has been bothered spiritually by people like this? Who has been affected spiritually by people saying one thing and doing something else? Look around the amount of hands that are in the church. Do you know how many people don't come to church today because we are hypocrites? Everybody says the church is hypocrites. They're telling the truth. Because we want to say one thing and that we love you and that we want you and you're great and, grab, and come to church with me. But then we live like hell in front of them and then wonder why they don't want what we got. Because we are living our lives, what? Like the truth's a lie. If I told you that I was selling Hoover vacuums, best vacuum cleaner on earth, you come to my house and I'm using a bissel, I'm lying against the truth, Right? True? Who would buy a Hoover from me if I had a Bissell? I call, I ask the car dealers, when I buy a car, what kind of car are you driving? Because if you're selling a Ford, but you're driving a Toyota, you're lying against the truth. So don't tell me this is the best car on the road if you ain't driving it. And we got Christians today that are saying one thing, selling one thing, and then living another way, and we're lying against the truth. And then we wonder why we got disunity in the body. Why? We try to live on a, 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 a worldly wisdom. And it ain't working. Is it working? Why is your life torn apart? Why don't you feel like you can get anywhere spiritually? Because you're living life. You ain't applying the wisdom that God gave you. When you accepted the Holy Spirit, He gave us what? The wisdom to walk our lives. All we have to do is what? Listen, right? Is it going to make sense? No. God's never asked me to do anything that made sense. Anything. When I was 19 years old, he asked me to teach an adult class, and most of the members were 40 or 50. You know what I said? God, that ain't going to work. But you know what he said? I don't care if you want to think it works or not. Just go do it. And I did it. And look what it cost me. Now i got to come here and talk to y'all every week. <laughs> Still ain't paid that debt back. But we're living lives. We're trying to be wise by the world standard and it's not working. You know the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And we've got Christians that are insane spiritually because they keep trying to live a lie and thinking it's going to work. And all it does is it pushes people out of our churches. It helps people to look at it and say, well, I don't want to go up there. I don't want to do that. Man, they got more drama than the bar. Not the bars, but the bar. <laughs> they might have some drama here. Make me try to get used to 
in the house and everything else has probably got some drama of its own. I can go to the bar and fight less than I can go to the local church and fight. And at least at the bar, they'll just punch you in the nose and walk off. In the church, they like to stab you in the back. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but it's earthly, it's natural, and it's demonic. How can you live that way? Why is it comfortable to live that way? It's natural. Y'all ever heard that? They put that on all these advertisements now when you get the shampoo, right? 100% natural. Then you flip it over, it's like dimethyl triglyceride. That ain't natural. You ever said go pick some dimethyl triglyceride off a tree out back? That ain't natural. <laughs> he said, what is natural? Why? It's easy to get. Why is it easy to live your life as a lie? Because it comes natural. You don't have to be taught to sin. He said, but it's demonic and it's evil. For where there is jealousy and selfish ex ambition exists, there is disorder. Why is there disorder in our churches? We're walking by worldly wisdom. Why is there disorder in your home? Could it be you're administrating your day-to-day -day activities the way the world tells you to administrate, not the way God tells you to? Because God's way just doesn't make sense. God tells us to tithe, but God, that don't make sense. I got to eat. Have you ever been there? Taking kids to church, but God, they don't want to go to church. They'd rather stay home and play video games. Now, wisdom then don't make sense, but when they get 20 years old and you can't do nothing with them, you can't fix it then. I tell you now, you can't fix it then. He says this, but the wisdom from above. Where's the wisdom from above? God, and where did you get that wisdom? Where did you get that wisdom? When did you get the wisdom? When you were saved, you got it, right? Are you wise in the kingdom of God? Yes, you have the capacity for wisdom. But are you going to put it in play? That's what he's saying. He says, because the wisdom that comes from God is first pure. Meaning there's what? No evil or deception in it. If you're living your life and you feel like you have to deceive to get what you want spiritually, you are living a lie. If something in the church is needed to be done in the church and you feel like you need to tweak it in order to get it done, then you're living a lie. True? I had a person talk to me recently and they said this. They said, look, like, I feel like I did something that God wanted me to do and then it fell apart. And now I'm angry at God. I said, was it, was it really something that God wanted you to do? Or is it something that you wanted to do so bad that you put the things into place so that you could do what you wanted to do? You know, Christians do that, right? They want to do something that might not be God's will, but they want to do it so bad they can't stand it, so what they begin to do? Tweak it so it's no longer pure to do what? Get what they want. Church people sneak. you got to watch it. It says, then it's what? Peaceable. So if the wisdom that we implore in church causes disunity or causes angry feelings, then is it from God? Because that wisdom is what? Peaceable. Is it how you approach a situation? Isn't that the key to wisdom? If I go to Bill and say, Bill, you make me so doggone mad, let me sit down a minute, let me tell you something. How am I going to get responded to by Bill? Hopefully he'll say, yes, Pastor, let me sit down. <laughs> but if I go to Bill and I say, Bill, I love you, man. Can we sit down and talk about something? Something that's been on my heart. Do I get a different response? Because that wisdom is what? Peaceable because it's from God. But the first wisdom is what? How the world handles the situation and what do you get? You get the one response of the world. Because last time I checked, we all still are part of the world, right? right. Then it says it's gentle. Y'all like that word? Gentle. I've never been accused of being gentle. I can be gentle, I guess. With my kids, maybe. But we need to be gentle with what? Each other. You think we've lost that ability in churches and it's causing this harmony and dysfunction because we don't know how to be gentle to each other anymore. It's all that. Can you stand her? She wore that same outfit three weeks ago. She knows I got that outfit. She keeps wearing it. No, we're going to wear it on the same day. Petty, right? 
But he says we are to be peaceable, gentle, reasonable. You know what reasonable means? Willing to compromise. Not willing to compromise your beliefs or the foundations of God, but being reasonable means what? Willing to compromise to help from keep from ruining somebody else's spirituality. Is that true wisdom? I want to help you whatever I need to do. It might make me uncomfortable, but I want to give a little, you give a little, and we will get where we need to get the kingdom of God. Not what? My way or them back doors. Right? Then it says what? Full of mercy and good fruits. Why should we be merciful? Why should you be merciful in the kingdom of God? Don't need to know this. This is pretty important. Why should you be merciful in the kingdom of God? Were you shown mercy? Word of God says that I have forgiven you, but if you do not forgive others, then I won't forgive you. So I have mercy. Why? Because God gave me mercy. God said, you know what? I was a dirty sinner before salvation. Who was a sinner before salvation? Who's still a sinner? We still there. We still require mercy. So we need to be merciful because we still swimming in the pool of mercy. And how can we throw somebody out of that pool when we didn't we didn't build it nor create it? I used to hate that. We used to go swimming at the at the uh, public pool, and at a certain time they let the old people swim. So everybody had to get out the pool. And let the old people swim for an hour. Because the old people can't swim with the young people. Because then the young people jump on their heads and all kinds of stuff like that. So you had the Jericho generation swimming at 12 noon. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting old. It's okay. You get old, you get to go see Jesus. It's all right. I'll be there. But it wasn't no fun getting told to get out in the pool, right? How many of us are swimming in that pool of mercy that we keep trying to tell people to get out? We don't want to give them no mercy. We want to swim. Oh, ain't that funny? We all want to swim in the pool of mercy, but we don't want to give none out. Move it on. Everybody saying you get the medley. Unwavering. That means you're not here today and gone tomorrow. And I love the last word. What's that last word? Without hypocrisy. Because when you try to administrate your life through worldly wisdom, you are a hypocrite. Plain and simple. When you try to take the Bible and use worldly wisdom to apply it to your life and you ain't living it, but you're talking it, you're a hypocrite. We've got a lot of hypocrites sitting in churches all across the country. Got hypocrites in here. Don't be looking at your neighbor trying to figure out. They ain't got a tattoo on them that says hypocrite. That means as a hypocrite, we say one thing and we do something else. He says, what? True godly wisdom means you ain't never going to change. You're the same today as you are tomorrow. Does that still mean you got bad days? Yes, we all know Wednesday's my bad day. I got text messages on Tuesday saying I know it's not Wednesday. Because if it was Wednesday, I ain't texting you. We know you got a bad day on Wednesday. My bad day this last week was Thursday when I went in the ditch. But Wednesday wasn't quite as bad. But we're unwavering when we live according to God's wisdom. And the benefits is what? What's the, what's the benefits of God's wisdom? Mercy. That's the number one benefit. If I live God's way, I get some mercy. Because Lord knows I need mercy every day. Because I'm still a sinner saved by grace. I still make stupid mistakes, say stupid things, and act in stupid ways. And I need to live by spiritual wisdom because I know I'm going to have to dip in the mercy pool again next week. But when I make that straight line and that hypocrisy mindset that I want to say one thing and do something else, you don't ever get mercy. Let me give you all a little bit of advice. The very stick you use to hit other people is going to be the same stick people use to hit you. True? Better watch how you swing. And the last thing says this. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness. Who's the seed? You are the seed. He said when you live by biblical wisdom, you become the seed of what? Righteousness. And that righteousness is sown in peace. Because God is peace. God is love. 
by those who what? So can you live by worldly wisdom and change anybody's life? Can you live by worldly wisdom and affect anybody for the kingdom? What did Scripture just say? Did Scripture just say that? That you are the seed, and then also that seed that is within you bears fruit that changes what? The people, the seeds that other people sows peace in their lives. So you can't change people unless you live a changed life. You ever tried to change people from a hypocritical mindset? Who's ever, <laughs> I've been guilty of this before. Who ever took the scripture and tried to bang somebody upside the head thinking you're going to get them to heaven? You ever tried that? You're going to hell, you dirty sinner. You lucky we let you into church. It tremored when you walked in. You see the people come in and when they walk through the doors, you look at the roof, make sure it's still standing. That don't work. But when we go to people in peace and show them how we live, then we can change their lives. But when we just talk about having worldly wisdom and quoting scriptures and not applying it to our lives and not changing, you know what people want to see in your life? Straight up, I'm fixing to make it easy for you. Because I'm going to tell you religion's easy. Spirituality's easy. We make it hard. If people see a difference in you, they will want to be different themselves. You believe that's true? Just look on Facebook. It's called fads. We are a fad generation. We're a fad seeking people, right? Somebody who we look up to decides to wear their underwear on the outside of their pants. Don't laugh like you won't happen. Every teenager in Collin County will have underwear on the outside of their pants. Why? That person they look up to wears it that way, so what? Yeah, this is cool. Right? Y'all remember that? Jelly bracelets. Y'all had some of them before? What about jelly shoes? Y'all remember them little jelly shoes? How about parachute pants? Spiked wristbands. Bangs that are hairsprayed to heaven. Right? White rain rule. Because it had the highest concentration of sticky. Should I keep going on? What's some other fads in the 50s? Cigarette packs rolled up in your sleeves. White t-shirts. Greased back hair. Bell bottoms. Bell bottoms in the 70s, right? Tie-dye t-shirts. Are we a person of the fad? Do we look at like those that we look up to? So if you want people to look up to you spiritually, you have to be what? Can you talk about being spiritual? Can I talk about wearing bell bottoms and other people want to wear them? No, they want to see them what? Oh, me. Oh, me. Can I sell you a Hoover vacuum cleaner if I'm driving a Bissell? No. We're not driving it. I feel like I'm driving it. <laughs> not pushing a Bissell? No. Begin to live our lives with spiritual wisdom that people's lives will be changed. Your own life will be changed. You'll be different. You can no longer be who you used to be if you seek God. Is that true? So why do we do it the hard way? To say to all that, to ask that question, why do we do it the hard way? It's easy. Thank you, Roy. At least you're telling the truth. It's easy. Because it's hard to be a Christian. True? True? Not if you do it God's way. If you learn to be this, yes, Lord. If God says, do it, you don't say, well, I don't want to do it. You say what? Yes, yes Lord. Treat God like you treat your wives. <laughs> See how that works? When you learn the words, yes, ma'am, your life gets better at home. Yes, dear. True? Yes, dear. Doesn't that work better? Same thing with God. If you just learn to say what? Yes, yes Lord. I'll do whatever's necessary you'll find that your life begins to be lived with a little bit of wisdom. Because the wisdom of God is way better than the wisdom of our world. Now, I don't know what your situation is in here today. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Lord, if you don't, I can introduce you to Him today. Greatest thing that ever happened to your life, He'll give you true spiritual wisdom, and you won't have to live by your own wisdom anymore. Because I've found that my wisdom is always fallible. You might be here today and you want to join our church. If that's the case, come forward and we'll, we'll talk to you about that. You might be here today and you're a Christian and you've been living your life this whole time trying to do it the world's way. Instead of showing it through God. Wherever you're at, stand with me to your feet, move and get in these altars.